We just love you. Am I on? Yeah. I don't see me. Yeah. Praise you, God. You can have your seat this morning. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We just bless you. We praise you. We just glorify you. We exalt you. Are we on the air? Yeah. Hallelujah. This is very awkward this morning for me. <clears throat> and I'm grateful for our, uh, for our viewers that's with us this morning. Speaking from a very dark ladies man. We've got no electricity. Something wrong with the cables. But our God is the same. Yesterday, today and forever. Amen. So I want to invite you this morning. If the picture looks different, praise God. Praise God. Close your eyes. Just open your ears. But you have to hear what I want to say this morning. Because God has always something to say. God we are not fortunate. That's the wrong word. But I am so glad that I can serve a speaking God. Yes, a God that speaks. Yes. A God that is not limited to, to space, to time. There's no limitations to that. And the fact that you are here this morning. Thank you. Thank you that you are here this morning. This morning I I want to take I want to take you somewhere. I want to really I want to take you somewhere. So in all of what's happening in not just in our city but in all of our nation what's happening in the world if you if you want to be demoralized if you want to be overthrown if you want to be negative discouraged do yourself a favor six o'clock in the evenings, there's news on television. Watch it. Do yourself a favor and listen to every broadcast on the radio. News broadcast. It's, it's a place that promotes people to fall apart. So I want to say this to you, to you this morning. The challenge is in our lives. Many people, they fight the devil. And it's true. I'm not speaking against that. But if you just change your view 180 degrees and you look at yourself, that part of your body that's on, on top of your shoulders, that's your enemy. Yes. Your head is your enemy. True. Your mind is your enemy. You are battle mindsets. You are battle things that you must correct. You want God to correct it. You want God to change you. 
then allow Him to reset your mindset. Get in the Word of God so that it can be reset. But this morning, I want to I wanna say this to you. Our minds is the greatest obstacle. But I honor my mind. I'm glad God gave me this mind. I'm glad for the process of transformation that I can allow the Spirit of God to work inside my mind so that I can change my mind. Is it easy? No, it's not. Can it be accomplished? Yes. How long will it take? Maybe till Jesus comes. But every day of our lives, we need to change our minds. So this morning, I want to say this to you. Just put your hands on your head. Just put your hands on your head. And you must speak to your mind. I'm not going to speak. You must speak to your mind. I want you to tell your mind. Say to your, say to your mind. Mind? You're a good servant. But you're a poor master. In the name of Jesus. I command you to come under my spirit. Spirit, I command you to sit on the government seat of my mind. Spirit, take your rightful place now. In Jesus' name. Amen. That was a practical exercise how we practice the presence. In creation, the first creature in creation that we see in the book of Genesis that was possessed by another creature is the serpent. And when the devil wanted to communicate his word, he knew that he can only do this communication through flesh. You understand that? Yes. His word, the devil's word, also had to become flesh. And when you hear the serpent speaking in a book of Genesis, it is the first recorded manifestation. And I don't want to call the devil a demon because he's not a demon. You have to hear what I'm saying. It was a satanic manifestation. So, you have the victim, the serpent, who is possessed by a spirit. And the speaking, the first manifestation in that book of Genesis 3, the first manifestation, the Spirit didn't scream, the Spirit didn't yell, the Spirit, the devil was speaking, speak. Manifestations is not always falling down, rolling over, screaming, shouting, no, no, no. Many manifestations is just a matter of utterances, speaking. You have to notice, the devil is in the serpent. I think we've all got it wrong, all the days. 
The devil was in the serpent. Why the serpent? Because the serpent was the most subtle of all the wild creatures, according to Genesis. Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the, which the Lord God had made. It wasn't the possession by the devil that made the serpent more subtle. No. No. The serpent did not become intelligent. Or let me say it like this. The devil, he chose the most intellect. He chose the one that's most intellectual. Hear this. The serpent, he did not become intellectual as a result of being possessed by the devil. The serpent did not become intellectual as a result of the satanic possession. The devil just chose the most intellectual. So why? Why did he chose the most intellectual creature according to Genesis? And today, he's choosing the most foolish to communicate. You see, in the book of Genesis, he realized that he was dealing with an upright man before the man fall. Adam had not yet sinned. Adam had not yet sinned. He was a straightforward, upright man. No sin. And the devil required the highest and the most sophisticated approach in order to deceive the man. The most subtle creature had to be hired against the upright man. But after the fall of man, in our generation, we are foolish people that's being used by the devil to communicate and we are still being deceived. We've lost our state. We've lost our position. We've lost dominion. The devil has a word, but he realizes that he's a spirit. He realizes that if he wants to, to communicate the chaos, he needs a body. So he needed flesh. He needed a body. He needed flesh so that his deceptions can be communicated amongst men. Guess what was the first conversation about? What was the first conversation about? Has God indeed said? The first time, the first appearance, the only chance that the devil got to speak to God's un ultimate creation, man. He did not come unto man with a bottle of beer or a bottle of wine or a glass or a cigarette or a cigar. No! He came unto man and he wanted them to doubt what God has said. Because he knows if he can take away that You've lost everything. If the devil can have you to doubt what God said, he got you. 
has God indeed said the intelligence of the devil? Already he is telling us that he knows that God spoke. Has God said, the devil says this to us. I know that God spoke, but I want to deceive you. I want to get you to doubt what God said. He knows that God is in the business of speaking to his children, to his people. He knows that. No matter what God did. He didn't come and say, wow, did you see the trees that God created? Did you see the heavens and the stars and the moon? Did you see the sea and the fishes? No, he came. Not what God did. But he starts his conversation by what God said. Has God indeed said, Shall you not eat of every tree in the garden? The first temptation, it happened right there. And it was for them to doubt what God has said. That's what the devil, devil is trying to do right now in this day in your life. He wants you to doubt everything that what God has said concerning you. He wants you to doubt that. He wants you to say, he's, you know, he, he's so busy trying to make you doubt whether God really meant what God said. Can it be? Is this thing really going to happen to me? In my life? Is it really going to happen in my life? That what the man of God spoke? That what the prophet prophesied over my life? Is it really going to happen in my life? Can it be true? Did God say it? So when the serpent is speaking, it was the devil. Why is it today, in, in this day, why is it, if you speak, it's you that speaks. Yet, yet, when the serpent spoke, it was the devil speaking. See your situation. Your situation that you are in is not changing because you are attempting to use God against it. God! I have to change my situation. God, take me out of this! Well, God want to prepare you Against your situation. God is not the weapon in your hand. He's not the weapon in your hand. You are the weapon in His hand. He wants to be represented. He wants a representative in this earth. He, the first representative in the garden were approached in the area of the word. And they were made to doubt the word. The whole conversation there in the garden was, it revolved around has God said? It's all about what God is saying that matters now. What God is saying in our day. What is it that God is saying? 
So I know I have God and the things that's around me. It can assist me. You have to hear him saying in giving this information. Have you ever noticed that when we look at the life of the prophet Balaam, as much as God had warned Balaam to adhere to the call of the king Balak, we know the story. Balak said to his servants, Go and fetch Balaam. The prophet, so that he can come and those Israelites that's rising up, that become stronger and stronger, that he can curse them so that I can conquer them. As much as God warned Balaam not to go and support Balak, still he went on doing just that. We know the story that he the servants slept that night in his house. The next morning they saddled their donkeys and they are on their way to Balak. And, and Balaam was riding on a donkey, on his donkey. But at some point, the donkey spoke. I've heard many sermons on this. I've heard preachers say, there's nothing special about being used by God. God can even use a donkey, really. But even if God can use a donkey, isn't there something special about being used by God? Even if it's a donkey. God can use anything. God can use anything. But by using anything, it must be God using anything. But inasmuch as we like to reprimand the prophet, how is it that this prophet wasn't able to see the angel of the Lord? What is it with this guy, this prophet of God, that he couldn't see the angel of the Lord? What's wrong with him? What's wrong with this prophet? But we forget that even a man who once, you have to hear him saying, we forget that even a man that once heard from God will still remain a dangerous man. Even a man who once heard God's voice, it might be 10, 20, 30, 70, 80 years ago that he heard God's voice the last time. He's still a dangerous man because the power of what words spoken, because of the power of the words spoken, it will always leave a residue. There will always be, even if it's just a small amount of power, but there will always be something left behind. A man once hurt, even if he's now a backsliding, backslidden, is a dangerous man because of what the power of the Word of God carries. It's that what gets you. Those that fall away from church, they are the ones that speak. Dangerous. Let's say as much as Balaam had rebelled against God. He's on his path of disobedience, going where God said, where God discouraged him to go. And because of his disobedience, he lost his spiritual senses. 
Can I say that again? Disobedience unto God, unto His Word. People lose their spiritual senses. He can no longer see the prophet, the prophet of God. He can no longer see, he cannot discern. Maybe he can no longer hear what God had said. I'm telling you. You don't want to find yourself in that same kind of predicament. You always want to be alert when God appears. So we attack him. He lost it. Balaam lost it totally until God used a donkey. What you don't see and what you never be able to see unless it's revealed, listen, is that it was still in the prophet's ability. The donkey had to hear and see and speak, but on the account of the prophet. Let me explain this. It wasn't all the donkeys in that area that heard, that saw, and that spoke. It had to be the prophet's donkey. So inasmuch as he is a disobedient prophet, still he had enough grace to make things around him to speak. Wow, you don't hear what I'm saying? It wasn't every other donkey. It had to be the prophet's donkey that prophesied. So the donkey has to know that in case the donkey thinks that the man has been, been fired by God and then goes on to start his own church. Someone here got it. It is still the presence of the fallen prophet that made the donkey speak. Child of God, you must be aware that you make the things around you speak. Things that you're expecting to hear from God. Things can speak to us that's around you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I wish I can look you in the eye. <clears throat> what situation are you in? It speaks to you. Your situation that you're in speaks to you. It has a voice. It speaks to you because you're getting fearful of that. So how did you get fearful? Because it spoke to you. The problem that you have is communicating a message unto you. And you are focusing on solving the problem and yet the problem is there to convey a message. You must be able to hear when a donkey is speaking. <coughs> Let me ask a question. If Balaam could no longer hear God, and it was just the donkey speaking, who then wrote in the Bible what the donkey said? If Balaam no longer could hear God, we have to notice there was only two people present at that moment there. It was just Balaam and the angel. 
Was it the angel who wrote that in the Bible? No, it was not. If you think Balaam wasn't able to, to know, to hear, how did he hear what the donkey was saying? So even in his false state, he was able to hear what the donkey is saying. He heard what the donkey said. Numbers 22 verse 28. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? You might think that if you were there, if you were present there, that you would have heard the donkey. That's what you think. You might think it. Did the donkey speak in English? Or Zulu? Or Afrikaans? Or German? Hebrew? Aramaic? We think that it opened its mouth and it spoke in a known, a, a known tongue, a known language. Who knows? Maybe the language that the donkey spoke is a donkey language. And all that the prophet had to do was to interpret, to decode the language of the donkey. The same language that your donkey today is speaking. It's just that there isn't any balaam to do the interpretation. What the problem in your life is saying? What is your car saying? What is your marriage saying? What is your finances saying? What your children saying? It's the donkey that speaks to you, but you need to interpret that. Things will have to speak in their own language, and it's your responsibility to enter into that language and attach an interpretation to it. This morning, the failure of the electricity, it spoke. But you have to enter into the language of the situation and interpret what it says. Who knows? Maybe that same miracle of having a donkey to speak is still being performed in, 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 in this day by God, in your life. The only person that's absent is Balaam, who can understand the language that the donkey is speaking. Things around us are speaking to us, but they're using their own language. But if someone goes on to write what the donkey said. You will think that's what the donkey said. When finally the angel of the Lord appeared unto the prophet, the angel said, you have to give thanks to that donkey. You have to bring a sacrifice unto that donkey. If it wasn't for that donkey, I would have killed you. Maybe that's when Balaam managed to interpret the actions of the donkey. Oh, this is why you were behaving like you did. And finally the angel appeared. Maybe he's saying, now I understand. Donkey, I understand why you are doing what you, what you just did. Because you've never been behaved like this. You've been a good donkey. You didn't crush my leg before, but now you crushed it. 
in the alley. And he's constructing a statement out of the behavior that was very strange. Maybe the donkey didn't, and I'm not saying that the donkey didn't speak. I will not contradict the word of God. I just want you to help you understand something. Because that's what prophets do. That's how we understand God. God gives us. We stumble upon something that we read. And then we hear God speak about these things. And then we extract those things that we hear from the word of God. And we apply things. The effectiveness of the word of God. Listen. And I'm not trying to push God into any direction this morning to say something new. I'm not. I'm just making use of everything that God said and what He spoke up to now. But you have to find out what it is that speaks to you. You have to find out, do I have a word from God regarding this, this, this circumstance, this problem, this thing? Do I have a word of God? And then, you have to discern that this thing speaks to you. And then you speak to it. And when I'm hearing you speak, do the thing. I hear God speaks. I hear God said. Donkeys are still speaking in our day. What we don't have is a balance. You must know how to interpret the behavior of that circumstance that you find yourself in. Whether it's, whether it's whatever, whether it's a machine that you operate. And it gives you problems. Whatever the circumstance is, it speaks to you. And you have to speak to it back. Understand the language of the donkey. Interpret the language of the donkey. Why isn't it that the donkey is moving forward? Why is it? Why isn't it that the, that the donkey is not moving forward? Why is it that your life is not moving forward? Your spiritual life. Why is it not moving forward? You were moving forward in the beginning, three, four, five years, and right now. Why is it that your life is on its knees? The donkey's on the ground, not moving. What is it that the donkey is seeing that you don't see? What is it that the donkey is hearing that you don't hear? Hear what God is saying. You see, I, I hope so sincerely. I've got, I sincerely hope that you, you are spiritual this morning enough. That through this whole series that I've been preaching for the past six weeks. That you will understand that God speaks. Yes. And He uses things to speak, to convey a message to you and me. Don't give the devil the honor for everything that goes wrong. Interpret the language of that thing. Maybe God wants to teach you something. Maybe He wants you to learn something. Something that will loosen your brakes and start promoting you to go forward. But the nature of man is to curse and to speak bad all the time.
God speaks in our day, He still speaks to His people. We have the presence of His Word in our day, today. We cannot be lost. We cannot be lost. We are no longer in darkness. We cannot live in darkness. We cannot live as people that's lost. We cannot live as people that when they pray that they hit the ceiling. There's light. You are the light. It's all over us is light. Because God speaks. He assured us victory. And because of that, I know who I am. God is waiting to see me manifest. God is waiting to see me manifest. He's waiting to see you manifest. I have a word from God. It gives me confidence. It gives me hope. It encourages me. And I just don't, I, I don't just have this confidence, but I have the confidence of the Word of God. The word of God is confidence. Yes. Yes. Why? Because God is no different from his word. He don't change. When God speaks his word. And I don't want to go back into you speak. When you speak, it's God speak. But when God speaks his word. He's speaking himself out. Yes. When I heard God speaks, it's a piece of God that I've got. Because he's the word. He goes out there to conquer. Riding on a white horse. Because the warfare is clean. It's smart. I don't have to fight. I can just sit in his presence. Dressed in white linen. Like Revelation 19 says. Dressed in fine white linen. And when I arrive at the war scene. With my beautiful white dress. White fine linen. I realize, wow, it's over. Victory. It's mine. So as you hear me today, and you are finding yourself right in the center, in this day of a battle, I'm saying this to you this morning. You are coming out of that Amen. victorious. Amen. I declare in the name of Jesus that you are coming out of your circumstances victorious. Yes. I'm telling you this morning in the name of Jesus that you will ride out of your circumstances dressed in white, clean, and you are declaring victory Amen. over your circumstances. You're looking at every direction. And it seems that there's no hope nowhere whatsoever. Because everything that you are facing, it dates back to your generations. The rubbish started there. And you are sitting with it here. 
It's time to receive that liberty. Yes. That place of victory. Amen. Watch what is going to happen. You coming out. You're going to look at your generational rubbish. And you're going to be cut off from that. So that you can go forward. Moving forward. Progressively moving into that what God planned. Because the battle of that has been won. He did that. Let me change it. He that's in me did that. But the church forgot how to become quiet. The church forgot or never learned because religion never taught this. Religion taught that you will suffer your behind off and that you will fight all oh, religion taught that God's going to come and do it for you. I speak over you. You're coming out. And if you don't interpret what I'm saying, Apply it to your life and speak in your life saying, I'm coming out. That circumstance, that donkey, that's got a message and keep on communicate with you. will keep on communicate with you till kingdom come and you're going to fight battles that you are already supposed to have the victory in. You carry a different word of God. There's no failure in that. The failure is in the vocabulary that you use. There's no defeat for you and me in the word of God. You might fall today. You might fall tomorrow. But you're not going to fall forever. You are created for excellence. You are created not to fit in. To stand out. Stop you try to fit in. Stop it to try and fit in everywhere. Stand out. Stand out. I declare it over your life. You will stand out. Amen. If you keep on trying to fit in, you will compromise to fit in. And I'm not, a, I'm not compromising anymore. I'm standing out. The power that God deposited in your life is for the ascension. It's for you to rise up out of the mud. It's for you to rise up out of the dust. This is what God is saying. And I want to say this, it's more than prayer. I haven't prayed anything. This is more than prayer. I spoke. I'm saying what he's saying. You're coming out. Yes. We are not telling God to do some things. You are hearing what God is saying already. And God is giving you a fresh assignment a fresh assignment 
those that spoke words against you, those that said about your life, about your finances, about your marriage, about your children, about your business, about your work, about your life, about anything of you, those people who spoke. And that created things in your life, problems. And your life is messed up because of what they said. Yeah, what I'm saying to you this morning, the words that I'm speaking now unto you, unto you, I'm speaking a superior spirit. Amen. That will go after every inferior spirit. Amen. That accompanies every inferior word. Declaring that was declared to you by the inferior people in your inferior generation. You've become a member. Wow! You've become a member of a superior clan. Amen. You belong to a conquering tribe. Amen. This is your generation. This is where you belong. So you might think, but look at my background. Look at my family. Look at my genealogy. Listen, this one, this tribe, this family is most superior over it all. Yes. You belong to the new Jerusalem. You belong to the community of the city of God. Amen. Where the king of kings, our father, where he carries crowns. And he goes ahead of us, Jesus. And we follow after him as part of the heavenly host. We are in this battle to win. Already conquered. Already victorious. So for you and for me, the biggest thing that you can do today is to put a wide smile on your face. Knowing that God is on your side. Can you say that? God is on my side. God is on my side. God is on my side. He's not just on my side, He's in me. Oh, God is in me. Do you want some trouble? When you speak, every word, whether good, whether bad, whether negative, whether positive, every word that you speak shall be established between two witnesses. The word became flesh, has spoken a word. I'm finishing. Church, let's spend time in the presence. Let's spend time in the Word of God. Because the moment that you spend time in the Word of God, the Word becomes to dwell. The Word dwells in you. And it synchronizes with the mind. And then you start to behold the glory. The glory as of the only begotten Son. You have to dwell. The word has to dwell in you. So that the word can become flesh.
He's in you. But the word that he carries is also in you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses. That word in you needs to become home. The moment it becomes home, it becomes the spoken. And when you speak, He speaks through you. And when He speaks through you, It changes our circumstances because we heard what the donkey said. We heard the donkey spoke, speak, speaking to us. And most people try to figure out the donkey in a physical dimension. But when you interpret the donkey's language, you rectify that by speaking God's word. Yes. I want you to hear what I'm saying this, this morning, church. You are no batting ram. You are not something that that needs to be defeated in every second. The victory is yours. But the, 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 the revelation of that victory is still hidden in you. And it only comes a reality if you allow the word to dwell. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to give Janine now a, a, a chance to speak. Hallelujah. I have a scripture from um, Isaiah. Isaiah 62, verse 10 to 12, and it says, Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, Take out the stones. Lift up a banner for the peoples. Indeed, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the world. Say to the daughter of Zion, Surely your salvation is coming. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call him the holy people the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Father, I just love you. Jesus, we love you so much. Holy Spirit, In this day that we're living, in this time that we're living in, there's such a demand. The demand, the scream, the cry of the world is so severe. It's a time-consuming exercise to accommodate the busyness of every day. It's a never-ending story. It's pressurized. It's asking everything And it's so difficult 
to come to the place of balance because you've made the same request from us to give you everything. But the tendency, Father, in this day is that we give more, that people give more to the requests and the demands that the world is shouting and screaming them to them than at hearing and be obedient to the word of God. The demand tries to exceed the voice of God. And it's just the people that can say no. This morning, Father, there's so many behaviors around us that's got voices that we can listen to when it speaks. And to adhere to that message, we, have, we do have the choice to bring the correction into that by our words, by the words that we speak. And we did that this morning, we spoke into this city, we spoke into this municipality, we spoke into this nation, into our government. We sp we're speaking to the church to rise up. We're speaking to the church. It's time to get resurrected from the deathbed that comfort provides. It's time for the smell that will appear in that resurrection to be removed when the death cloths are taken away by the power of revelation so that people can move into a place of celebration and joy declare the joy of the Lord is my strength not my bank account, not my family account, not my children, not my business, not my... The joy of the Lord is my strength. I declare this this morning, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. In the name of Jesus. We'll see, we'll see the glory, the glory manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.